Okay, this is the 8.3 instructional video for Math 30-1. Um, in 8.3, we're talking about the laws of logarithm, and the reality is we've already talked about one, so I'm going to do that one first. And the first law that we talked about was the change of base form, which is if we have log base A of B, what I can do is I can switch that into log base C of B divided by log base C of A. Now, there's certainly restrictions to this. Um, a and B must be greater than zero because they're in a logarithm. And for our math 30-1, um, the base that we choose must be greater than one. Um, and I really should say that because of the way I wrote it, A and B would have to be bigger than one because we are making, uh, you know, A was the original base and so on. Um, that is the one that we've done already. The, by far the most typical application of this is if I was doing log base two of eight, which is three, I could write this as log base 10 of eight divided by log base 10 of two. And that would give me three as well. We've used that already. I like to introduce that early in the log chapter because graphing these without, you know, that, that different base logarithm is very, very difficult if you don't have access to that. Okay, the other log laws, really, really important is that in order to use these, and use the Altman, and we'll see it mathematically, is they must have a common base. And all I mean by that is if I give you, you know, log base two of X plus log base three of X, we can't do anything with that. And the, you know, the, the closest thing you've dealt with is radicals. If I have root two plus root three, you can't do that. They're not like terms. And it's the same concept when we talk about these common bases. So if we were to have, and this is typically called the product log law, let's say we had, and I'm just gonna write, well, let's do log base C for all of these. So log base C of N times M can be written as log base C of N plus log base C of M. Now, why that is so useful is it allows us to write the multiplication of the arguments as the addition of two different logarithms. I'm gonna give examples of these. Let's say I had log base 10 of 10 times 100. I could write this as log base 10 of 10 plus log base 10 of 100, and this would give me one plus two, this would be equal to three. Now, I always like to show this with an example that if I were to expand that, I would have the log of 1,000. Now, in order for this to be true, I should be able to write the base to the power of the value is equal to the argument. Is 10 to the power of 3 a 1,000? For sure it is. Now, this is what we're focused on today, and it's what we're going to use in the notes in, in most of the examples. The product log law is very, very useful, not more useful than the others, I suppose, but um, it's the first one we start with. Now, throughout math courses, when you start to talk about multiplication, typically division is the next thing that you talk about. And if I have log base C of N divided by M, and I'm just going to put above it that M cannot be equal to zero, but it's in a logarithm, so it couldn't anyway. We can split that into two logarithms as log base C of the numerator minus log base C of the denominator. All right, these are all on your formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize them, but you have to be comfortable enough with them that preferably you're not checking your formula sheet each time you have to use a log law. Right? These become you know, the same thing as when you learn fractions. You have to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. You have to get comfortable enough with these log laws that they're internalized so that you can use them within a more complex problem. All right, the last law, that's the quotient log law in red there, by the way. Um, the last log law is the power log law. So if I have log base C, of x to the power of n, I can write this as the original exponent times log base c of x. Now, the one that I'd like to look at here is what if I was dealing with log base 10 of 10 to the power of three? This log law tells me that I can take three and multiply it by log base 10 of the base, which is 10. Well, log base 10 of 10 is one, so log base 10 of 10 cubed is equal to three times one, which is still three. So we so see that it holds true. Um, one of the applications of this power of log law is if you are ever given log base C of C to the power of X, that is immediately equal to X. Now I'll give an example of that. If I had, I mean, this is an example of that. Log base 10 of 10 cubed is three immediately. We see that it is through some manipulation. Where this is useful is, let's say I did have to take log base 2 of 16. Well, what I could do in this example is I could write 16 as 2 to the power of 4. Log base 2 of 2 to the power of 4 is 4. And I would like to show that just a little bit more. Let's throw a variable in there. So log base 2 of 2 to the power of 4, let's make it equal to x. Keep in mind that two to the power of four in its entirety is the argument. If I switch that to exponential form, I get two to the power of X is equal to two to the power of four. 
So X has to be four, which is the value of our logarithm. Nothing will ever replace actually using these log laws though. So you are gonna notice that this assignment is a little bit longer than the others because there is no shortcut for, for getting good at a number system. You have to keep using it and get comfortable enough. Try to remember back in you know grade school, elementary, when you learned fractions, how difficult they were. Now, hopefully fractions are a lot easier because you've been using them, you've been practicing with them. And it's the same thing with logarithms. So make sure you are trying you know, those extra worksheets I put on Google Classroom because they do make a heck of a difference and they help you to master this material.